Well, it's estimated that food waste in the U.S. alone stands at a staggering 30 to 40 percent at the farm, retail and consumer level. So CG10's Maria Garlang spoke to Brian Lipinski. He's the lead researcher for the World Resources Institute Food Program about why the current food production system isn't working and what can be done to fix it. With our current food system, one of the big problems is that we're not making effective use of what we're already producing. There's a lot of what we refer to as food loss and waste, or just food waste, where food gets grown and for whatever reason it's not ultimately consumed by people. And so that can take form in a lot of different ways. It could be close to the farm, it could be that something gets rejected because of cosmetic reasons. It could be that it spoils during transport or there's not enough cold storage to keep something from spoiling. It could be that at a grocery store, they don't sell everything in time and they have to dispose of something. Or it could just be that I'm at home and I bought too much on my last trip to the grocery store and those apples got pushed to the back of the fridge and now they've gone bad, so I have to do something about that. And where in the cycle does majority of food loss tend to happen? So what we tend to see, just as a, a broad trend, is that in richer parts of the world, more developed countries, places like the U.S. and Europe, we tend to see that most of the waste happens at the consumer side of things, so further away from the farm gate. And that's because there's a more developed infrastructure closer to the farm. So you have more opportunities for processing, there's a more developed cold chain system, and so food can get to the consumer more readily. What happens at that point is that retailers or restaurants, they, they have an abundance of food. And so you tend to then see waste occurring at the point where food is inexpensive or there's just too much of it and then, then it has to be disposed of in some way. In less developed nations, you tend to see that waste occurring more at the farm level and we actually refer to that more as farm loss because there's not the intention of throwing it away. It's more things like infrastructure matters where maybe there's not access to market or maybe there's insufficient storage or handling issues or even not enough labor to harvest everything, at which point you tend to have that loss occurring closer to the farm level. And if in those areas, you don't really have as much household waste because food tends to be a larger percentage of household income. And so, Generally, what is produced, that what makes it to the table, gets eaten. You don't have very much consumer waste. And what sort of health factors come into play? The, the tricky thing about using health as a barometer is that all the time it feels like there's a new study that comes out that tells us that something that last week was a superfood is now bad for us this week. And so overall, the trend tends to be that what's what doctors say are good for us, things like eating a plant-based diet mostly, eating less meat, not necessarily going vegetarian or vegan, but just eating less meat in your diet, tends to also be good for the planet because those are also the things that use up less land, use less resources, are responsible for fewer greenhouse gas emissions. And what's the most realistic way to achieve this perfect ideal of a circular economy and is it achievable? You're never going to have a perfect circu circular economy because there's always going to be some sort of inefficiency. And in fact, economically, you're going to reach a point where it doesn't make sense to, to save every last scrap of food. It's just not feasible. Um, so the dream scenario would be finding that level where you're doing enough, you're, br you're feeding enough back into the system and things are, are circulating enough while you're minimizing that waste in a way that's not causing undue hardship for people. And what should we really be looking at in terms of population growth and shifting dynamics in the next 20 to 30 years? I think in terms of especially using the food we produce in a more efficient way, everybody can do more. And that's what makes this a really tricky issue is that everybody has a part to play. So even though it seems like such a no-brainer that food is getting wasted and something needs to be done about that, the trouble is that in some places it's going to be the farm where you need to target interventions to really hit those hot spots. In some places it's going to be changing consumer behavior, which is notoriously very difficult to do. And it's not just governments who have to play a part, and it's not just businesses, and it's not just people. It's everybody having to work together. And that's what makes this an especially thorny issue, is that you don't just have one solution where you can say, all right, we, we've changed the way we 
we label dates on food and now everyone understands exactly what food waste is and we're not going to have it anymore because it's just, it's not that sort of silver bullet sort of issue. And which countries are leading this circular economy shift? So I would say the United Kingdom tends to be a leader in this space and, and to a lesser extent the rest of Europe. Um, they've really got ahead of especially the issue of food waste and the circular economy relating to food at a much earlier stage than many other places and they've actually achieved big reductions in waste already. I would say also the African Union has actually put out a very inspirational target of cutting food losses in the African Union by 50% by 2025, so it's called the Malibu Declaration. And it's a really exciting step forward. The real issue then is what sort of actions do you actually take to, to meet such an ambitious target?